Welcome to the Plastic Drums 101 webinar, presented by the Plastic Drum Institute. Chris Lind, formerly of Mauser USA LLC, originally presented this webinar. We'd like to thank Mr. Lind for all the work he did in putting together this presentation. The Plastic Drum Institute, or PDI, represents the manufacturers and suppliers of the North American plastic drum industry. Our mission is to promote the use of plastic drums and represent our members before regulatory and legislative bodies. There are currently five plastic drum manufacturer members. During this webinar, we will cover the history of the Plastic Drum Institute, some advantages of plastic drums, the design and types of plastic drums, and DOT regulations. Other important factors are permeation and environmental stress cracking. The History of the Plastic Drum In 1951, the Delaware Barrel and Drum Company produced the first plastic drum. That drum was a polyethylene and steel composite drum. In 1954, the drum was officially recognized by the Bureau of Explosives, now called the United States Department of Transportation, or DOT. The drum was authorized for the transportation of dangerous goods and hazardous materials. In the early 1960s, the first all-plastic drums were produced. The first was a 15-gallon plastic drum, and it was used to replace the glass carboy in a wooden box that was used to transport sulfuric acid. Since then, the acceptance of the all-plastic drums has increased tremendously. One of the many advantages of a plastic drum is the use of extremely tough, high molecular weight, high density polyethylene to manufacture the container. Plastic drums are extremely strong, rigid, lightweight, and durable. They are manufactured from the same type of material commonly used in gasoline tanks. Since plastic drums are lighter than steel drums, they are easier to handle, maneuver, and stack when empty. Plastic drums won't dent, rust, or peel. Most drums are easy to handle, due to a large compression-molded ring that facilitates lifting with parrot-beak equipment. The drums can also be easily grabbed and moved with manual lift carts. Most drums have a sump well molded into the drum bottom and protected label surface areas on the drum sidewall. The drums can be cleaned and reconditioned, or ground up and repelletized for use in other industries, increasing their sustainability and life cycle. Plastic drums are also manufactured in conformance to national and international standards, which leads to easy filling, shipment, and storage. The plastic drum is designed and manufactured in conformance to ISO standards 20848-1, Dash 2, and Dash 3, resulting in minimal variation in size or shape among manufacturers and ensuring the consistency of the product you purchase or fill. Methods of Manufacture The polyethylene material used to mold plastic drums has many beneficial properties, including toughness, chemical resistance, good barrier properties, and adaptability to various fabrication techniques. This illustration provides an overview of the blow molding process. To begin, the plastic drum is molded by melting the polymer previously described. The resin is applied to a hopper that feeds into a heated extruder. The extruder melts the resin using heat and pressure. The molten resin is extruded through a die to form a cylindrical parison. Molds that are mounted on platens clamp around the parison. The molds are water-cooled to form the drum. Air is blown into the drum to inflate the parison into the sides of the molds. The finished product is released from the mold upon opening. This illustration provides more detail on the blow molding process used to manufacture a plastic drum. A set amount of molten polymer is forced through the die and emerges as a hollow, circular pipe shape called a parison. The parison slides over the blow pins at the bottom of the mold. The parison is partially inflated before the mold closes. When the mold cavity is closed, there is a second pre-blow to inflate the parison to stretch the material into the cavity left open by the top ring slider. The sliders close, compressing and forming the plastic into a handling ring or top ring. 
After forming, the mold is indexed to the pickup station where the inflated drum is cooled against the mold and replenished with cold air. After the cooling cycle, the air is exhausted from the inside of the mold. The blow pin is unscrewed to form the closure and internal threads. The top ring slider plate opens. The robotic arm gripper clamps the drum bottom flash. The mold opens and indexes back to the next parison. The drum is supported by the robotic arm gripper. The automated robotic arm transfers the blow molded drum to the deflashing station. The blow molding cycle starts again with a set amount of molten polymer being forced through the die to emerge as a parison. Plastic drum closures are generally made out of polypropylene or the same type of polyethylene that the drum is made out of. Typical drum closures in the United States are a 2-inch NPS-style fine thread and a 2-inch buttress-style coarse thread. Drums are available in the United States with 70mm buttress-style threads as well as 56mm buttress threads, which are commonly used for high-pressure plastic drums and for the export market. Next, we will discuss the UNDOT markings for a plastic drum. Every drum used to ship hazardous goods must be tested and UN marked. The testing includes a leak test on every liquid rated drum at 20 kPa for packing group 2, Y, and packing group 3, Z, and 30 kPa for packing group 1, X. A drop test with a height determined by the packing group and the specific gravity of the latings is performed. Typically, the height ranges from 0.67 meters to a high of 3 meters. The leak proofness test is conducted for 5 minutes at 20 kPa or 30 kPa, depending on packing group rating. The hydrostatic pressure test is determined by the vapor pressure of the lading at 50 or 55 degrees centigrade and is conducted for 30 minutes on a plastic drum. The stack test is based on the number of containers in a 3 meter high stack or for periodic retesting, a compression test can be performed. The vibration requirement is a one hour capability test where the drum must withstand one hour of vibration without leakage. Performance oriented packaging tests must be repeated at least annually. FMC Rule 256 is a tip over test on open head drums. Every packaging authorized for transporting hazmat or dangerous goods is assigned a UN ID code. This code indicates the type, material, and categories within the UN mark. Using this chart, a drum will be marked with the number 1. If the drum is made of plastic, it will be marked 1H. A tight head plastic drum is marked 1H1, and an open head will be marked 1H2. Chemicals are classified according to their hazards. A chemical can have multiple hazards and be assigned to more than one class. A flammable liquid could be classified as a corrosive, an oxidizer, or a poison. The next designation is the packing group. Materials are assigned a packing group based on the degree of danger presented by the hazardous material. Packing group 1 indicates the greatest danger. The corresponding drum mark is X. Packing group 2 indicates medium danger. The corresponding drum mark is Y. For example, gasoline is a packing group 2 flammable liquid. Sulfuric or battery acid is a packing group 2 corrosive material. Packing group 3 indicates minor danger, and the drum requires a Z mark. It is permissible to use a drum marked for packing group 1 with packing group 2 or 3 materials. Similarly, you are allowed to use a packing group 2 authorized drum for packing group 2 or 3 materials. The UNDOT marking is required on all drums and packaging authorized for hazardous material transportation. If the drum does not have a UN marking, it is not legal to ship filled with hazardous materials. It is important for you to understand the markings on plastic tight head drums. The marking includes the UN symbol, a lowercase u and an n in a circle. This symbol must be the first character when reading the mark string from left to right. The UN symbol is followed by the alphanumeric designation that indicates the design type.
in this case 1H1. The number 1 signifies that the container is a drum. The letter H signifies the drum is made from plastic, and the one following the H signifies that the drum is a tight head style. The next portion of the mark is the authorization for the packing group. A mark of Y indicates packing group 2 or 3. 1.8 authorizes the maximum specific gravity allowed for shipment in this package. The 1.8 mark indicates that the authorized lading may be 1.8 times as heavy as the weight of water. Following the 1.8 mark is the hydrostatic test pressure, which also indicates the drum is authorized for liquids. The test pressure in this mark is 100 kPa. Next comes the year of manufacture, UCXX in this figure, which should be replaced by the last two digits of the year of manufacture of the drum. USA signifies the country authorizing the mark and the country of manufacture. The last designation is the M number. The M number is a four-digit DOT registered number that is specific to a manufacturer and a manufacturer's location. Alternatively, the mark could have a registered symbol such as a set of corporate initials. In some cases, you may see a plus with a two-letter designation and a four-digit number, such as plus AA0044. The plus designation signifies that the drum was certified by an outside third-party laboratory. Each outside certified lab has its own plus designation. Open head drums are defined as drums that have a closure or opening over 70 millimeters or 3 inches in diameter. You will note an S in the UNDOT mark, signifying that the drum is either rated for solids or contains an inner packaging. Open head drums can be used for solids or they can be used as outer packs for inner packagings. Similar to the tight head mark, the first character in the UNDOT marking is the UN symbol. The 1 in the mark signifies a drum. The letter H signifies the drum is made of plastic, and the number 2 denotes that it is an open head style drum with a closure opening of 3 inches diameter or more. The letter Y indicates the authorized packing group. In this particular example, the drum is authorized for a packing group 2, solid material. It may also be used for packing group 3 materials. The number 200 is the maximum gross mass authorized in the drum in kilograms. Drums are only authorized up to 400 kilograms for solids. Next is an S, signifying solids or inner packagings. The XX in the mark should be replaced by the year of manufacture. USA is the country authorizing the mark followed by the M or manufacturer's number, registered corporate symbol, or third-party lab designation. The Department of Transportation has very specific regulations on plastic compatibility. It is the responsibility of the person offering a hazardous material for shipment to ensure that the packagings are compatible with their lading. In particular, corrosivity, permeability, softening, premature aging, and embrittlement must be evaluated. Each plastic packaging or receptacle which is used for liquid hazardous materials must be capable of withstanding, without failure, the compatibility test procedure specified in Appendix B of the Code of Federal Regulations. There are some challenges facing plastic drums, which we will discuss in the following slides. Some classes of chemicals will permeate plastic drums. There are four stages of permeation. The product is absorbed on the inside wall. The product dissolves in the polyethylene, diffuses through the polyethylene, and then is desorbed from the outside wall. Excessive permeation leads to paneling in the sidewall of the drum, possible collapse and failure. For additional information, go to the PDI website to download a white paper regarding paneling and permeation. To help shippers determine the compatibility and permeation rate of their lading in plastic containers, 
the DOT published a compatibility permeation test in the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 173, Appendix B. The test has three optional test periods. You can choose 14 days at 60 degrees centigrade, 28 days at 50 degrees centigrade, or 180 days at 23 degrees centigrade. The pass-fail criteria is 2% weight loss or less over the test period for flammable liquids. The test also has a standard for poisons with a 0.5% maximum weight loss over the test period. Here is a list of products that will need further evaluation for permeation. Hydrocarbon-based solvents can be problematic. Products that end in ENE, like benzene, toluene, or xylene, may not be good candidates for long-term storage in a plastic drum without additional treatment or the use of a barrier in the plastic drum. A second factor to consider when packaging your product in plastic drums is a phenomenon called environmental stress cracking. Environmental stress cracking is a function of time, temperature, stress, and environment, and manifests itself in the form of a catastrophic failure. There are usually no warning signs of an impending failure. This illustration shows the interior of a drum that has been subject to stress cracking. Although it takes time for stress cracking to occur, it is accelerated with higher temperature. According to the data collected, for every 7 degree centigrade increase in temperature, the crack growth rate is doubled. Storing a plastic drum filled with an active stress cracking agent in a hot warehouse can result in catastrophic failures, even in the winter. Chemicals such as surfactants or wetting agents provide the ideal environment for stress cracking to occur. Active ingredients are usually inert. Inert ingredients are usually active. When reviewing a product's safety data sheet or SDS, often the hazardous chemicals listed on the SDS may not be the cause of the stress crack. Carriers and surfactants are normally not hazardous and therefore are not listed on the SDS. For that reason, it is important to conduct a test prior to packaging a product in a plastic drum. The plastic drum industry designs their drums to reduce molded-in stress points that can be areas for stress cracking to attack. It is always wise to run a stress crack test if you are unsure of the product's compatibility with plastic. The preferred test method is ASTM D55-71, standard test method for environmental stress crack resistance of plastic tight head drums. Most stress cracks occur when the drums are subjected to externally applied stress. The stress can be caused by storage on rough or uneven surfaces, excessive overhang on pallets, drums sitting on nails that protrude from pallets, excessive weight applied as a top load on the drums, or banding or stretch wrapping too tightly. This is a photograph of a stress crack caused by pallet overhang. This particular drum was on a pallet that was too small, causing the drum to overhang the side of the pallet, leading to a stress crack. The properties of the high-density polyethylene will have an impact on permeation and environmental stress cracking. Density is one measure of polyethylene resin properties. As the density of the polyethylene resin increases, the stiffness, tensile strength, and shrinkage during molding goes up, but the impact strength, environmental stress cracking resistance, permeation, and clarity all go down. Another important parameter used to evaluate polyethylene resin is melt index. The plastic packaging industry uses melt index to evaluate and specify resin. Melt index is a measure of the rheological properties, or flow, of the polymer itself. The melt index is determined by testing in accordance with ASTM D1238. To begin this test, the resin is preloaded in a heated chamber. The weight is placed on a piston, and the amount of resin flow is measured in a specific time frame. The results of the test are recorded in grams per 10 minutes. The higher the number, the quicker it melts. Another important property of polyethylene resin is molecular weight. As the molecular weight of the resin increases, its processability decreases, 
the melt strength increases, the clarity goes down, and the environmental stress crack resistance, ESCR, goes up. Tensile strength and impact strength also increase. When considering the use of a plastic drum, these are the important factors to consider. Pallet construction, size, and condition. Pallets must be large enough so that the drums do not overhang. Stack height is dependent on the weight of the lading and storage temperature. Cooler storage temperatures are preferred to reduce stress cracking. As a reminder, plastic drums are shipping containers and are not intended for long-term storage. If the formulation of your product has recently changed, re-evaluation of stress crack resistance and compatibility may be required. Often an inert ingredient is more active at lower rather than higher concentrations. The plastic industry has developed a standard test to evaluate ESCR performance. Changes in formulation of inert ingredients, especially surfactants, can actually increase stress cracking. So what questions should you consider when deciding to package your product in a plastic drum? For permeation issues, is the product water-based or hydrocarbon-based? Hydrocarbon-based products are going to permeate at a higher rate than a water-based product. For stress cracking, does the product have surfactants or wetting agents? Sample bottles made from the identical resins used in your drums can be used for preliminary testing. Additional information can be obtained from Sue Nauman at her email and phone number listed here or visit the website plasticdrum.org for free technical information on plastic drums.